My name is Wayne. Uh, thanks for making it to this talk on a Friday. Um, and thanks for partying with us yesterday, if you actually made it to the, uh, to the Space Needle thing. Um, so yes, uh, this talk is about audio. And uh, who actually is an audio designer or a sound designer here? Awesome. Um, who, who's an audio programmer? OK. And who thinks audio is a complete waste of time in games? <laughs> OK, good. Good, good, good. We're in the right place. So uh, yes, a little bit about me. I work at Unity. I, uh, I work in the R&D office in Copenhagen. And I work on the audio. And yes, yeah, so and this is obviously the obligatory uh, things that I do, which is mostly killing myself uh, with aquatic activities. <laughs> so yes. Uh, Unity 5. You can imagine we were sitting around in this uh, like dungeon where we all sort of hang out. And we were like, what are we going to do for Unity 5? And, and we came out with, oh, yes, let's make more audio, more, more audio stuff, you know? Um, and while this is sort of true, um, the reality is that obviously audio has been a little bit of a neglected thing in Unity for a while. And we've really needed to push and sort of uh, bring it to the, to the next gen sort of situation. So to do that, we had to first evaluate the current situation of the audio system. And after we did that, we realized we had to kind of rework a lot of it and refactor um, a lot of the back end, which you guys, you guys probably don't care about, but you'll benefit off. Um, but we had to, yeah, we had to rewrite a lot of the asset pipeline stuff, which I'll go into later. Optimize uh, the resources, uh, the way we re manage resources and the way we work with resources in Unity. And a lot of this refactoring is also clearing out a ton of bugs that we have in the backlog for audio. And one of the next things and one of the current things that we're working on is creating better workflows for you guys um, to work with audio in Unity. So we did this. And we thought, OK, what's next? Where do we go from sort of reworking the audio system? And I guess like. What we wanted to do was make audio uh, a feature that is like well known in Unity. We wanted to make, take it as a first class feature. And we wanted to make it something that is really uh, um, well known and role respected in the industry. Um, and we also wanted to do something that is um, targeted at sound designers, you know, guys that probably aren't the strongest in programming. Um, in Unity before, if you want to do anything sort of dynamic or anything fancy in, in, uh, in audio, you had to kind of get your hands dirty with uh, programming. And we just wanted, we want to make a tool that is uh, awesome and it sort of covers the full spectrum of game audio. So the first thing we did was we created this new thing called the audio mixer. And I will talk about this first and then I'll get into details of like some other improvements we've made and where we're going into the future with audio. So the first question is why? Why, why make this audio mixer garbage? And the, the, the simple answer and the first answer is that previously you weren't actually ever able to do proper submixing in Unity. Um, the audio uh, source was always playing directly into the audio listener and you couldn't do anything fancy with that. It was actually kind of impossible. So we had to address that first. And we wanted to make it sound designer friendly. Uh, we wanted to present an interface that can be familiar with, uh, with you guys out there. And because getting the, the, the game mix, the, the, the kind of like the soundscape mix is like super important, like getting it right, getting it like totally leveled and uh, making, it, uh, making the ambience and, and all of the other sounds uh, sound perfect is super important. So to start, I want to talk about categories. And a lot of sound designers will know that the first thing you try and do with sounds uh, in the soundscape, like across your whole game, is you try to categorize them. You want to put them into categories. You want to put, section them off. And then you want to do things with them. You want to uh, change the volume or the pitch, or like add some effects, do some processing on certain sections. You want to like play certain sections of the mix off another. And, uh, and yeah, and categories can be can be anything. They can be simple things like um, a category for a level, or they can be more complex, like categories for different uh, NPCs' footsteps, or 
I don't know, like music, obviously, things like that. And I have an example here of just uh, some thing I made up, um, which is shows you the kind of like uh, categorization and classing that you do. Um, you can imagine that if you're in the open world, um, you want to play the open world music, whereas if you transition into the, into the boss fight, you bring down the open world music, you get rid of all the things like the ambiences because you, know, you want, don't want to pollute the mix, um, things like that. And that's exactly, obviously, what the audio mixer is for. And it is a new type of asset that you can you know, uh, create in Unity. And it allows you to create really complex and awesome routing hier hierarchies. And I've got an example here of like, how it will work or how it does work. Um, you can see that the audio source is playing into an audio mixer, which is made up of audio groups, which I'll get into. And you can route the signal of that uh, audio mixer into the audio listener or into another audio mixer, and you can create sort of complex um, chains of audio mixers and, and things like that. So you can create some uh, pretty funky, weird stuff. And it's essentially for controlling the global mix. So you, a lot of people get confused initially. They're like, okay, so I, it's for playing sounds or it's uh, like, uh, is it for interactive sounds or anything like that? And no, it's not. It's for it's, it sits between the audio source and the audio listener, and it allows you to create, um, it allows you to uh, sort of master the entire soundscape. Um, and it's all about just signal processing and routing. So I will actually go back, and I will actually uh, give a little example here. Uh, you guys can see that OK? Yep. Um, so you can imagine like uh, I have a, a simple level here and I want to create some ambiences. I want to create some, um, I don't know, it's just uh, some simple uh, sounds in the game. If I jump in now, I just have sort of unmixed wind. It's pretty loud and it's kind of a little bit annoying. So you can see here that I've, uh, I've got an audio mixer called ambiences. I'm creating this as a separate thing, like where I'm going to have all my ambiences playing into this audio mixer. But you'll also see that it's actually routing into the, the main mix, which is um, this, uh, this main mix, sort of like the master mixer. So let's, uh, let's, let's actually start by adding some new audio sources, some new ambiences. So I'm just going to jump in here. I'm going to, um, oops, where did that go? That in there. Oh. Ah. oh well. And what I can essentially do there is I can actually route that, start routing that into um, the groups in the audio mixes. So what I'll do first is I'll create a couple of groups in here. Um, one for the birds. One for the. Oops. One for the crickets, and one for the frogs, and also actually one for the wind. Let's do that. Cool. So if I jump back in here and I set the output, I can start routing these guys uh, fairly simply. You can obviously, it's what you're working with. Uh, you're working with normal uh, game objects here. Sorry, no, uh, asset objects. So you can either, you know, select them in the in the browser, or and we have this awesome like new interface in the um, the browser selector where we have um, uh, sort of uh, tree tree views. Um, uh, let's do the crickets. Where is it? Um, yeah, sorry. And the frogs. Okay, so if we jump back in now. Okay. So that's too loud. But uh, we can immediately start, obviously, mastering that mix by jumping back in. And bringing down the entire mix. Let's get rid of some of the wind sound because let's make it in sort of like the background. The frogs are way too loud. Crickets. Don't make any sense. 
And let's just keep the birds as they are. Cool, so you can see now that we've immediately sort of kind of made the mix a little bit better. And from there we can, um, yeah, we can start uh, extending the mix from there. And if I just jump around. Okay, so that's cool, but what if you want to do more complex things? Um, and obviously one of the, main, the, the big things you want to do is do some signal processing. And the, the great thing about the audio mixer is that you can create um, effects and uh, insert them anywhere into the, into the hierarchy, into the mix chain. So we have uh, the main mix here, you can see we've got a bunch of effects um, and they're actually before um, you apply the attenuation. You can obviously apply attenuation, like I showed you before, um, in the mix, and you can actually choose where you do that in the signal chain, so you can have pre and post effects um, fairly easily. And yeah, so the attenuation is applied in place, and there are heaps and heaps of obvious, obviously applications that you can go from there. So I'll just do a quick example in my ambience. Um, thing here. What I'll do is I'll actually create, bless you, um, a new group and I'm going to call it uh, reverb. And I'm going to actually create a reverb. Where is it? Let's fix reverb. And yeah, what I'll do is I'll actually route for now. I'm going to route the frogs in there because I want to show you stuff later. So we go there and we should be able to play around with the reverb for the frogs. Okay, it doesn't sound good, but whatever. Um, okay, so that's great. But what about if you want to do, you, you want to use an effect that we don't really supply off the, off out of the box, or you want to create your own um, awesome effect that you've got in mind, or you're, you're a programmer and you've, you've, you're a DSP manufacturer, or whatever you want to do. Previously, you've had to do that in all signal processing with on audio filter read, which is cool and it's flexible, but it's also uh, um, pretty costly because you're doing all of your effect processing in C, C Sharp land. So what we did is we created a framework for custom DSP plugins. and. Essentially, that's what, what it allows you to do is uh, extend uh, or sorry, implement a couple of callback functions and then compile a DLL, drop it into Unity, and you'll be able to access these, uh, these effects straight away in the audio mixer. And I've got an example of this. Uh, I'll just show you the interface quickly. So we have a bunch of callbacks, and you can, you know, all you have to do is sort of implement those callbacks in your in your native uh, plugin. And from there, you can create all sorts of cool stuff. Like I have a, an example multi band here and uh, multi band uh, EQ. And one of the greatest things about the new interface is that you can not only create a, uh, a back end effect and define parameters for that effect and uh, you know, be able to send data in and retrieve stuff from that effect at runtime, but uh, what you can also do is, uh, and I've got some examples here in my vocoder demo, uh, what you can also do is create, uh, no. yeah, you can implement your own uh, UI. So you can pair a UI, like a custom UI inspector, with the, um, with the effect itself, and you can draw whatever you want into it. So if you have like this amazing, uh, this amazing effect uh, interface that you have to have with your effect, you can do that and it makes it super easy. But it's also about more things than just that. Um, you can start doing, um, what we have an example here is uh, a, uh, where is it? Uh, nope, that's not it. We have a, an example uh, loudness meter. So you can start doing things like, um, um, yeah, like uh, getting like uh, information from the mix and getting information from uh, from Unity about like how things are going. This is obviously important for things like broadcasting regulations and stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, so that's custom, uh, custom DSP effects. And you start to think, well, what can we do with this? Where can we go with this? And uh, like the ideas start flowing and it's actually a really awesome uh, avenue for you guys to create or use or like get and exchange um, awesome DSP, things like on the asset store, start making money. I mean, obviously you guys know DSP is, 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 a, is a big money industry. So this is something that not only will benefit you guys in the long run in terms of being able to res uh, get things off the asset store that you don't, you know, don't want to program yourself or you don't know how to program, but also if you do, you can get some money out of it. Um, yes. So, uh, 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 yeah. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, immersion now. So, you guys know that. Okay, so you've you've created uh, this amazing mix, and you're like, uh, it's 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 super tight and super awesome. But you also want to take the the uh, emotion and the mood of the players, the theme of the whole uh, of the whole game up and down, depending on where you are in the levels and stuff like that. And this is something that you can do with, uh, by changing, I guess, the mix. So you can actually bring in certain sections of the mix. Um, if you're walking, for example, from a cave area and you want to walk out into uh, the field and you want to bring up the music and the, obviously the ambiences, because before it was all very dark and gloomy, you can do that, uh, or you, you want to be able to do that with the mix. And I've got an example here of my example game that I quickly uh, wrote up. And in, if you can imagine you have like different areas of the map and when you're in the field, you just want it to be kind of ambient. If you're in the forest, it's eerie and so on and so forth, right? And you do this in Unity and with the audio mixer with snapshots. And snapshots essentially allow you to capture um, the, the state of all the parameters in the mix. So for example, all the effect parameters, all of the volume pitch parameters, uh, you can capture that state and uh, like store it into a snapshot. And essentially from there, you'll be able to transition um, between those snapshots at runtime. So you can, for example, if you're walking, like I said, out into the field, you can transition over a certain amount of time and just like change, change the mood or change the theme of the mix. So and also another thing you can do is create uh, complex blends of uh, more than two or more like snapshots. So it's not just about transitioning, but you can create sort of blends of different, uh, different snapshots. And it really allows you to like transition the entire soundscape, right? So you can transition like all of the parameters and all of the sort of aspects of the mix, or you can just transition a, a, a small, uh, small part of the mix, for example, Maybe because we have the ability to uh, to allow wet mixing, so you can define if you want how much of the signal you want to go through the effect and how much you want to sort of bypass it. So you can also snapshot that and uh, and then obviously bring an effect in or take it out, and then you know that's the that's the sort of granularity you can do with uh, snapshots. So. I've got an example here, back to our example. I've actually got uh, uh, an area here in which I, when I walk into, I want to emulate the, uh, the concept of walking into um, a dark room or walking out of the kind of the, the, the field, so to say. Yeah. Let me just uh, fix that. Um, Okay, so let's, uh, let's, we actually have a snapshot already that I've created. And at the moment, because I've just added those, uh, those, those audio groups, the, the mix is kind of flat. So let's actually, uh, let's change that. Let's, let's edit this snapshot. Let's, uh, oops. Um, and let's bring down, let's bring down the mix of everything. And so I'm not doing it just yet, but if I jump into, oops. So now that I've uh, changed the mix, changed the kind of like uh, the characteristics of the mix, 
Can we jump into the game? Uh, I've got a... Um, in the scene, I have a... Uh, a box trigger, and I have a, a, an example script, a quick script, that um, essentially when you enter the state, it's just calling transition to this snapshot. When you exit it, you want to transition out of it. And so if I jump into the game and I move around, and bring down the mix. Obviously the frogs are still playing because we're in a cave, right? Or something like that. That's it. Yeah. Um, and so that is uh, like an application of snapshots. And the snapshots are not just about uh, like, like areas in the map. You can snapshot anything and, and you can use snapshots for any sort of concept. Like you, if, you're, if the player is running around and you want to change uh, the characteristics of the mix as he's running around, um, you can do that easily. So uh, uh, back to here, I wanted to demonstrate uh, some, some other stuff. So I was showing you before uh, the custom DSP plugins. One thing I wanted to tell you was that um, in Unity 5, we'll also be uh, like giving you a suite of sort of demo, um, sort of uh, DSP plugins. Um, custom DSP plugins that you can get started with. And some of the cool things that we've got is um, obviously we have, uh, we've written a synthesizer, a couple of synthesizers that you can sort of start working with. We have the, the loudness meter um, that I showed you before, um, vocoders, stuff like that. And we have this awesome one which I'm really kind of like uh, uh, into is uh, a teleport demo which basically allows you to teleport audio out of, uh, of Unity into another application. So you can imagine that you have Unity and you, you're playing your mix, uh, you're playing your soundscape through the game, and you teleport the audio out into, say, Ableton Live or something similar, like, or maybe pure data. You do some processing in there and then teleport it back in and it just goes through um, in, and out the, uh, out the audio listener like, uh, like normal. So that's pretty cool. Um, Right, so uh, I was talking about hierarchies before, and I was talking about uh, creating categories and, 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 and these categories route into other categories and so on and so forth. But what if, uh, what if you, that's not enough? What do you need to, if you need to do some sort of cross um, category um, signal injection or you want to do something uh, a little bit more fancy? Well. Unity allows you to do that through the concept of uh, sends. And what a send essentially is, is it allows you to um, insert an effect, for example, um, like that. And, and that essentially allows you to route that, um, that send to somewhere else in the mix. I'll have an example. I'll just show you an existing example that I already have which is, uh, let's do the vocoder. So we have a whole bunch of sends here and we're actually sending all, like we have sending, splicing the signal off and we're sending a portion of the signal somewhere else. And in this case, we're sending it to all of the other groups in this, in this demo here. And sends are sort of like the, the, the first, like the one side of, uh, of this sort of uh, dance between where you want to send stuff and what you want to do with it. And the second one, one of the second ones is receives. So receives essentially are things that you can target with the send. As I showed you here, we, uh, we're targeting, currently we're talk, targeting the walkie-talkie receive um, over in, the, in this uh, group over here. And yeah, and the receive, basically you can put that anywhere into the signal chain and it allows you to uh, mix in the signal from the send. So you can send from anywhere in, the, in an audio mixer to anywhere else, um, allowing you to create sort of complex uh, signal flow arrangements. Uh, so what I'll do actually is quickly go into, back to our ambiences, and instead of uh, routing the frogs to the reverb directly, what I'll actually do is route them back to the, um, to the frogs audio group. Yeah, let's just see how that goes. 
And did I? Is that right? Yep. And it's not going in the right place. I'm not sure why there's uh, some hidden hidden noise going on. But basically, uh, then what we can do from here is add a send to the uh, to the frogs audio group. Put it before the attenuation. Add a receive into the um, into the into the reverb group. Put it above the SFX reverb, and then I can easily target it. So I can just send to the reverb and push the signal up. Oh. Oh no. No, oh, no. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. OK. Anyway, uh, this is obviously a build that I just built this morning. And it's not, uh, it's not doing the right thing for me. But I'll uh, let me start again. OK. And we're back. Awesome. Uh, but I've lost all my work. Never mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, you start seeing that receives are things that you can really take in uh, the, the audio signal, mix it all in, and uh, you know add it to the the signal chain somewhere else in the mix. Uh, the other thing that you can do, and that we've added default in uh, on the audio five, like added as part of audio five, is this duck volume um, ability uh, and a side chain basically a sidechain compressor. So if I show you that uh, in the main mix, I already have set this up in a couple of uh, examples. We have uh, this duck volume, and you can send to this duck volume and basically create uh, some sort of sidechain compression um, uh, setup. And one of the awesome things that you can do back to the um, DSP plugins is that we allow um, you to target, if you set up your DSP plugin as a as a uh, sidechain receiver, you can actually send to your own. You can set it up, set it up so you can send to your plugin, and in within the plugin, you'll be given sidechain data that you can do whatever you want with, and uh, and create your awesome, uh, your own awesome sidechain effect. So if I, I don't know what state we're at now, but if I jump in the game, and let me just kill that. For a second, um, if I jump in over here, and uh, we have some we have some music playing, some some sort of basic music, and if I jump into into the party itself, it'll obviously uh, pick up the beat, or I'll bring bring in instruments. So I brought in the kick drum, and. One of the uh, one of the awesome one of the awesome things you can do is now then start playing around with the I guess the, the beat or the punchiness of the beat. And uh, you know, not only do this, not, not only play around with like uh, obviously musical uh, musical applications, but sort of more traditional like FPS um, applications. So if I Drop in a drop in a grenade here, get an explosion. We duck the entire mix because of that explosion. And <laughs> so, so this is like uh, this is some of the applications of duck, ducking volume or whatever. And obviously, this is just the very the very tip of the iceberg. And especially with this uh, side chain. Um, ability that you can do in your own custom DSP. Um, the sky's the limit in terms of where we can take this. So you can imagine, like, uh, wh wh where can I take this? What can I, you know, do with in my game now, right? So that's uh, that's essentially the an overview, a very quick overview of the audio mixer and what it can do. Um, now I just want to have a, a quick chat about 
the other core improvements that we're doing and like the future of audio um, going forward past 5.0. So essentially the, the, the gist of uh, the, the core improvements that we did is about data. So it's about all about how we handle data. Um, it's about the type of data that we use, the transformation of that data. So what are we actually doing with that data? How we fetch the data, um, how we control the lifetime of the data, and how we uh, get you guys to interact with that data. Um, so that's that's the kind of uh, the overview of um, the kind of background core improvements that we've done. So I'll talk about the type of data. Um, we in Unity Five we've kind of changed our whole asset pipeline, and we've gotten rid of uh, the the way we uh, kind of encode. Um, the way we've changed the way we've encoded the audio. Um, basically, we've gotten rid of MP3 as a target. Um, you can obviously import MP3s. I'm not, I'm not, we're not, we don't take away your ability to drop in any kind of, uh, of uh, source asset. Um, but we've gotten rid of MP3 as kind of like a target um, compression format. Obviously, because of uh, things like looping artifacts and uh, a lot of other things that MP3 is uh, really bad at. Uh, when I say almost here, I mean because some uh, with WebGL and some browsers um, actually their only format that they support is MP3, which is really bad. Um, so we have to keep it in just for now until the, the sort of the WebGL front is uh, improved. Um, and we've introduced this new uh, format. It's just like a very, uh, very, very uh, optimized Vorbis implementation, not org Vorbis. Um, there's no OG uh, containing container headers in there. They've been stripped out. All of the codec books have been stripped out. It's like super lean, super tight, and it gets rid of all of the uh, the uh, artifacts of MP3. Um, and it's uh, has good compression characteristics. And it's actually uh, on most plat actually all platforms, it's better performant that than MP3 itself, and a lot more performant than OG Vorbis, which was your previous. Um, compression target on standalone. And we've also added ADPCM. Um, this is, you know, take it or leave it kind of uh, compression format. It's a great uh, cheap decode uh, format, but obviously if you guys have played around with ADPCM before, it's good for certain types of sounds, uh, things that can handle a little bit of noise uh, in the background. Actually, I have uh, thrown in a couple of um, example sweeping tones here. so. I've imported the same tone three times and um, set the, um, the format to three different types, to the three different types, sorry. Uh, the first one is PCM, so you can see that it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a sweeping tone. I'm not going to play it because it'll kill your ears. Um, uh, Vorbis is obviously still very, uh, very, very tight, very fine. And uh, yeah, 80 PCM, you get some, uh, some noise artifacts, especially high frequency. So yeah. Take it or leave it. It's uh, it's great for the right types of sounds because and it's uh, got good cheap uh, decode out of uh, sort of characteristics. Um, oh yeah, and I've got a graph here. I always always have to have a graph in a talk. Um, the middle one here is actually the new implementation. This is a, a memory um, a memory memory usage uh, characteristic. The middle one is. Um, uh, the new Vorbis con container compression. And I've got uh, the different uh, load types that you can do in Unity, so streaming, compressed in memory, and uh, decompressed on load. And you can see that it's using heaps less than OG Vorbis already. And it also has uh, better characteristics than MP3. So it is uh, the way of the future. We also um, changed the way we transform the data. So we've actually created a uh, uh, you don't have to. You, you don't actually interact with it, but we actually offboard the uh, import process for the for your audio data now onto another onto another application, which means that, for example, if you shovel in a, a, a sound that uh, is corrupted and it can bring down Unity, it's not going to actually bring down Unity anymore. It'll just um, crash the, the side importer, and it also means that we have. Uh, greatly improved support for huge files. Like you can import basically any file type, uh, any file size you want now, and it'll uh, be able to import that and load it into Unity um, just fine. 
So we also changed the way we fetch the data. We've massively improved uh, streaming. Uh, before, streaming was a little bit, uh, I guess, not, not thought about correctly. Um, streaming from asset bundles was not possible. It is possible now. Uh, sorry, it was possible in some platforms, but not things like iOS and uh, yeah, a couple of others. But now it's, uh, it's fine across the board. Um, and we allow you guys the ability to do uh, async loading. So I'll just jump into here and we have the option to do background loading. So essentially, if you're loading up your scene and you don't want to waste time decoding or loading up all of the sound files, you can actually do that in the background while the, memory, uh, while the menu is playing. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's great for those sorts of applications. And we've improved the way we handle the lifetime of audio data now. So before, which was really bad, we kind of like loaded up uh, a scene and we would load all the audio data in the scene. Uh, and if you had streams, it would create a stream uh, file handle for all of the streams in your game. And that was uh, when you start creating huge uh, soundscapes with a lot of sounds, um, you start hitting bottlenecks in terms of being a, just obviously memory budget, but things like stream handle budgets and stuff like that. It was, uh, it was a bit of a mess. So we've, um, we have allowed you guys the ability to um, decide if you want. Uh, when you want to load the data. So we have this option here now, preload audio data. It's set by default, so it will uh, behave the same as it did previously and load the data up when the scene loads. But if you uncheck that, it actually gives you the ability to, in script, um, decide when you want to load and unload the audio data. So the, you, can see, you can imagine now that the audio clip becomes a very lightweight um, container that you are actually loading in and out of the data. So. Um, yeah, and we are obviously uh, the way we handle the streams is much better. Once once sounds are completed, the streams cleaned up and uh, and disposed of, and yeah. And we also changed the way you guys uh, interact with the data. So, uh, like I said before, um, we've improved uh, multi-edit support. So now you can actually multi-edit audio clips, which was a pain before. I know, um, and we've removed the two D three D setting from audio clip because it. It basically didn't make any sense being there. I don't know why it was there in the first place. Um, and we've actually moved it, obviously, to the audio source where it makes more sense. But you'll notice that uh, in the audio source now, we don't have it as a checkbox. It's a, it's a continuous thing. So um, it's a parameter called spatial blend. And if it's 0, it's fully 2D. If it's one, it's fully 3D. This was in Unity in, uh, in the audio source before. It was just kind of hidden. Um, and you can obviously blend between those two settings uh, smoothly if you want to. And uh, yeah, we've improved the audio source inspector a bit. Obviously, we you know, cleaned it up a bit. Um, the 3D settings are still there, but they've been rearranged a bit. And uh, yeah, that's our kind of like, uh, just, just to keep it a little bit nice. So that's the, uh, that's the gist of the kind of core improvements that we've done. And uh, I guess the, I, I want to talk a little bit about the future and where we're heading. You notice that I'm talking, and about, uh, I'm talking about features that uh, are great for controlling the, the, the global mix. Um, but I haven't really talked about features that will allow you guys to create interactive sounds, which um, is obviously very important. Um, so. The audio mixer is the first, I guess, the first offering, 5.0 offering that we're giving, um, which allows you to do um, the mixing side of things. But uh, now that uh, Lucas talked about the director project uh, in the keynote, I'll be able to, uh, yeah, I can tell you guys that this uh, director project is something that we're working very hard on to be, allow you guys to do uh, interactive sounds um, in Unity. So the director is focused on I guess it's, it's something for not just audio. It, allow, it sort of brings all the subsystems together, but you'll be able to create really, really complex uh, um, audio, sort of interactive audio solutions in there. Actually, I was talking to some of the guys here um, before about an application um, that I was chatting to with a friend. He was working on one of the like Call of Duties or something, I don't know. 
and they were really happy that they, they worked hard and they managed to do this feature where the, uh, the sound of the game, the, the sort of the ambient wind sound, was actually controlling uh, a particle effect um, within, within the game. So you're actually using sound to control uh, aspects of the game, which was pretty cool. But you can imagine that, um, and I'll just bring up a screenshot. You can imagine the, having the ability to, in this, uh, in this graph node format, throw in a bunch of sounds like uh, some, some different, uh, different versions of some wind, and then drop a spawner in, connect those up so that it just uh, gradually um, plays uh, one wind sound after the other over the top of each other. And then from there, just put a, a metering node on the end of that, expose a parameter of that metering, uh, then attach like a, a scaling uh, operator on that and then just connect that up to uh, a parameter of uh, a particle effect. So you basically achieve the same thing that these guys were like losing their mind about and it takes you about 10 seconds in Unity. So this is where we're heading and this is, uh, this is the future of, um, of interactive sounds uh, in Unity. So yes. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, thanks very much for listening. <laughs> and. I really appreciate, appreciate you guys coming and, uh, and watching my talk. So if you have any questions, please uh, hit me right now. Uh, I'll start here, yep. Um, what resolution are you internally mixing in the spacer? And I saw no panic, so when I have global music in the game, Yes. Is it possible to scan them? And when I want to do a mix, can I attach a MIDI controller? Right, right. So the question is, uh, what resolution is the audio in the, uh, in the mixer? You can set that through project settings. Like you can actually define what, uh, what sample rate and everything you're, and channel count that you want to work at within the mix. Um, with regard to, uh, sorry, what was the second question? The uh, panning? Yes, OK, panning. Yes, uh, so panning, we, we do not have uh, like a inbuilt uh, panning effect just for 5.0. Um, this is something that we're working on, obviously, and something that we imagine that people will obviously be doing themselves and um, pushing to the asset store. So uh, that's kind of where we're going with that. And the last one was a MIDI controller, I think you said. Um, yeah, so. Uh, we've chatted a lot about MIDI and where to go with MIDI. We're not sure what we're going to do with that. We've also talked a lot about um, hardware support, so being able to like connect up your Mackie or something to um, to this audio mixer and be able to mix it, which is pretty cool. Imagine being able to um, being able to play the game uh, and then mix it at the same time. We've also talked about the ability to um, record the mix as you're doing it and then be able to play it back like in a cutscene or something like that. So yeah, um, not sure how we're going to like interface uh, these sorts of things and um, how we're going to implement MIDI in the future, but it's a, it's a good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, are you going to work on anything in the line of sort of audio cues or audio events to help us manage like variations in sound clips and variations right. in volume and pitch? Right, right, right. So uh, yes. Uh, uh, the question was, are we going to add the support for like sound events? And exactly, that's exactly what the the director project will will sort of bring. So it's, it, uh, I think Lucas showed uh, an audio player. So an audio player will allow you to, like, in very simple cases, um, drop a uh, drop a sound onto it, obviously. But you will also be able to create um, complex. Um, like variation suites and stuff in these in these director things, and that's actually treated exactly just like an audio clip. So you'll be able to drop that onto the audio player, and play that, or you'll be able to create like even more complex sort of like multiple audio players, and you're directing those mo multiple audio players at once and stuff like that. So it's we uh, we we're focused on this because um, we obviously need we have limited resources, so we need to like focus on um, the where we want to head. Eventually, so yeah, that's where we're going. Uh, yep. So, um, can you connect uh, animators up to the various uh, 
sliders and such so that you can control the mix over time? Right, yes. Uh, so I didn't show, yeah, there's a lot of things I didn't show actually, but because uh, it's super complicated um, and you can do a lot with it. But basically, you'll be able to do things like, at the moment I've described uh, snapshots which control the entire mix, but you'll also, you also have the ability to actually expose any of the parameters in the mix. Um, so you, you'll be able to like expose obviously just uh, the ones that you want to control, or you can, can you expose all of them if you want. Um, and then from there you can do what you want with them. You can animate them. You can you know um, you can control them from a, a, a game audio, uh, sorry, a, a game script or something like that. So yeah, yep. So uh, when you're transitioning from like one um, snapshot to another, yes. Um, I noticed there was like one value for doing the transition. Yes. Uh, are you going to have like different curves and different targets for? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, that's actually right here. <laughs> um, so uh, the default is a, a linear interpolation, um, but you can actually, uh, on a per, if, uh, per um, uh, parameter case, you can actually change the uh, transition. At the moment, we only have these inbuilt ones, so like brick wall at the start if you just want to like snap at the end or snap at the start and uh, smooth step and stuff like that. But yeah, we have we have talked about the ability to do um, custom curves and stuff like that. Uh, but that's something you kind of have to do going like in the future. But yeah, it's a it's a good point. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, so you've got this new improved memory management system where yes. audio is able to be preloaded or loaded whenever you need it. Yes. But how does that interact with asset bundles? Um, okay, so. With an asset bundle, uh, you're talking about if you load an asset bundle. Yeah, if you're trying to load audio from an asset bundle. Okay, so it so if you load an asset bundle and in, internally the audio clip has like you have not chosen to preload, you'll load the asset bundle and it'll just load the audio clip without the data. And when you go load the data, it'll load it in, or you can stream from the asset like set it up as streaming, or you can do whatever. So it's uh, it yeah. If you're if you want to use asset bundles. Uh, as they are now, I guess, which is like um, you load them in and you want them ready to go like uh, right then, then I would actually say, you know, you preload the data in the asset in the asset bundle and when you load the asset bundle, it just preloads everything and then it's the same behavior as it is now. Or you can, you know, you can play around with it now. Um, there's different options, I guess. But yep. you, sorry, you, yeah. you would end up with two copies of the audio sitting in memory if you got your asset No, 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 no. We are, we, so yeah, okay. So. In the background, we've also changed the way we uh, serialize the data. Um, so we've things like audio, and, and we're moving with other other areas of Unity. We're sort of disconnecting or stripping out like data heavy stuff um, into separate files. Um, well, not really separate files, but separate sections of uh, of files. Um, and in this case, no, you will not be loading the. You'll never load the audio data twice anymore. So you'll never run into those situations. Uh, yeah. Well, these uh, external DSP plugins you're talking about, will they be able to expose properties that are... Yes, of course. Um, like, uh, so I have... Uh, let me just bring one up. So this... Uh, it? Ah. Ah, yes. So this uh, demo EQ, like I have... These are all exposed properties and they just show up automatically in the inspector. Um, like I said before, if you... If you choose to draw your own interface, you'll obviously be able to create an interface that interacts with those parameters that you want. Or if you don't want to do that, you just want to show like a, a basic um, like a visual like this, and then just have Unity like iterate those parameters automatically. Um, that's how you do that. So the, uh, the DLL API is it like a key value type? It's uh, it's. It is a. It is a, you define a, an effect definition which you, you fill in with your, um, with your different callbacks and you have a whole bunch of parameter descriptions which you can fill out and set those in and then uh, you know, send, them, send those over to Unity and we take care of the rest. Um, yeah? I'm guessing just by you definitioning it, you guys completely ditched FMOD? No, no, no. Uh, not at all. We uh, we still use FMOD in the background. Um, to achieve this, we've had to do a lot of source code additions to FMOD. But um, no, we still we still use FMOD, and uh, we plan to use FMOD uh, for, for um, a <laughs> while. I'll start with yep. Um, 
So my question is probably sort of a long-term thing here. Yes. But um, do you have any plans or thoughts on how to make the uh, audio side of things more accessible to people who are not uh, sound designers? Like if there's an artist. Or right, something. right, yep. Okay, that's a good question. So you're basically you're asking, uh, have we thought about exposing the back end a little bit more for programmers? Uh, not for programmers, but yeah. people who are not familiar with a lot of this audio stuff. So if, if they look at this mixer, they're going to be maybe confused. Ah, okay. Learn a bunch of stuff. Right, right, right. Is there any way to sort of simplify that? Um, so you're saying achieve the same thing with like a, a maybe like a scripting API or something like that? Anything at all. Uh, it can't probably be you know exactly the same thing. You won't have the same level of control. Right, right, right. It can be as awesome, but can it be like seventy percent? Yes, awesome? yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> so we have uh, we have uh, thought about this. We have thought about um, where to go forward with this. I mean, like I'm just talking pie in the sky here. Like one of the things we kind of were thinking about was uh, I don't know if you guys know the the new. Um, the new, uh, what's it called, uh, networking API, but there's kind of like a, a separation between like a high level API and a low level API. Um, we were kind of thinking maybe we should um, present something like this in audio one, in audio as well. And uh, actually, I remember our conversation uh, about um, just the ability to um, drop in like, or replace a lot of um, aspects of um, the, the back end of Unity as well, so uh, in sound wise, so being able to do things like change the spatializer or something like that, we've also been you know, thinking about that. But yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of, like I say, pie in the sky and we're, we're in the sort of thought process phase, but yeah, this is something we definitely want to tackle. Yep. Uh, with these custom DSP effects, can you also add in DLLs with, say, a custom decoder for a format that yeah. only you use? Of course, yeah. How, how would that work? Um, so I guess like you would have to uh, you would have to somehow point the um, the the decoder to the file or something like that, and you could possibly do that. At the moment, we have uh, exposed only um, floats as parameters. Oh no, and we also um, expose uh, like blob data. Um, I don't think it's in this one, but basically it allows you to send whatever you want. So you'll be able to I guess send things like file names and stuff like that. And then I guess the, the um, effect will be able to load that and do stuff with it. And then you can interact with it through parameters. But yeah, so um, hopefully, it's, uh, hopefully it's open enough that you can do any sort of crazy stuff you want like this. Um, and we're going to be adding more, um, more features to it as we go along. Yep. Uh, right at the back. Yep, yep. Um, this up with the latency on mobile. Right, um, so latency on mobile, we'll, we're definitely trying to tackle that. You're talking about Android specifically, or? Uh, I actually want to focus on iOS, but there's right. latency there. Okay, yeah. Um, well, I guess uh, a lot of the latency is unfortunately not, not accessible, not like uh, up to us to change. Um, it's actually in the kind of like uh, back end. I know that on on uh, Android, there's a lot of latency issues, and it's to do with um, how you actually, like which buffer you're writing into, and you can actually change the buffers that you're writing into in Android um, to get on a fast path, which is low latency, and we're, we're working towards changing the, our backend Android implementation to get on that to kind of improve latency across Android devices. Um, you can also you know, change the DSP buffer size in Unity to, to reduce the latency. Obviously at the cost of more uh, CPU usage, but you can do that. But yeah, um, unfortunately, the, the majority of the latency that you see is, uh, the latency in Unity, is, in Unity is like in the order of uh, less than a handful of milliseconds, but the rest of it is actually coming from the device itself, so uh, yeah. I was wondering if you're planning to implement HRTF or any sort of uh, yeah. spatialization yeah. that is physically correct. Right, right, right. Uh, it's a good question. Um, and I guess uh, this is all coming from the, 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 the craze of VR, I guess, maybe? Yes. Um, so, so, yeah, obviously now that this is becoming a real thing, um, we're 
we're investing our time and thought into this and we're not sure exactly where we're going yet with that. Um, we've been chatting with a lot of different guys about like different ideas about how to implement this and also yeah, not just HRTF but also like implementing um, like more, more real uh, sort of uh, realistic um, environments and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, we haven't, we haven't uh, decided on any roadmaps yet of that but um, that's something that we'll kind of like schedule or like look at after we kind of get this 5.0 out the door. Yes, uh, okay, so the question was, does it support surround sound and can you um, synchronize multiple audio sources? So the first answer is yes. Uh, at the moment, I've only got a stereo output because I'm connected here, but if I was targeting uh, 5.1, you would actually see like um, full surround setup. Um, 7.1, whatever, yeah. How does that work in the mix? With, uh, with in terms of what it looks like or uh, you actually just these uh, these guys here they'll be a little bit thinner and you'll have more of them and you'll be able to um, yeah get more of a more of a like you'll be able to mix all the, all of the channels like from like a, yeah the LFE everything you'll be able to control um, uh, the second question was, ah yes audio sources so there's two things you can do with audio sources the first one is uh, if you play them if you start them in the same loop, um, they will start at the same time. They'll all be scheduled to play at exactly the same time. But if you want more control than that, like you want to be able to stitch things together and stuff like that, we have a, a, an API. It's actually in f it's already in 4. Um, it's called uh, Play Scheduled, and it allows you to sample accurately schedule um, um, a whole bunch of stuff on a global DSP clock. So you'll be able to schedule um, you know, and, keep, and do whatever you want there. Yeah? Uh, two questions. Uh, firstly, are there any performance or memory considerations we have to take into account when it comes to like using lots of buses or splitting them across multiple mixes? Good question. Yep. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Well, yeah. So uh, the the answer. Uh, sorry. The question was: Is there any sort of like massive performance problems? Um, no. Uh, just gen just general mixing. Like if you have a whole bunch of buses, uh, audio groups, and you and you're just doing attenuation and, and you know, sort of hierarchy, that's, that's really very cheap um, operations. Obviously, if you start throwing in like uh, convolution reverb, you're gonna you know, pay the price. Um, we, we have a, uh, where is it? We have the ability to uh, the, show you the CPU usage. Um, and this is running, so this is, uh, this is a sidechain compressor obviously, and it's running um, right now, even though it's, it's not in play mode because it's running on, the mix is always running. And uh, yeah, it uses very little CPU, 0.17%. Um, but uh, yeah, so you'll be able to obviously um, um, get an overview of like what's expensive and what's not. You'll be able to profile that. So, so this leads into my second question, which is what tools do we have for investigating when CPU time is being spent, how much memory is being used, for which sources are playing? Yes, uh, yes, oh, like, okay. Yeah. What the hell is that noise I hear right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, sorry. Uh, and another thing that we've that we've uh, done put a lot of work into is the profiler. I haven't actually mentioned that at all, um, but the profiler shows you um, yeah, profile, yeah, it's, uh, the pro the profiler actually shows you a whole bunch of uh, new stuff now. Um, it shows you um, all of the channels that are playing, uh, what's paused, what's like, uh, what's scheduled. Um, it can give you overviews of the whole uh, like mix hierarchy and stuff like that. It gives you like what's happening, the audibility, like it, it, it shows you basically everything now. Of the mix. Uh, yes, I can, I think. Oops, you yeah, want that? Um, I'm gonna, I'll just make something play. Exactly what uh, audio clips are playing, or audio sources are playing, and uh, exactly what's happening there. So, yep. uh, this is actually showing the. Let me just kill it. Uh, the question was, can I, can you sort those? Um, this is actually showing the the full hierarchy. So um, it, I don't think we 
you know, it doesn't make sense to be able to sort that. But you're, you, you're asking for a flat list? No, like if you were trying to find one for one. Ah, OK, OK. Right, right, right. Uh, actually, that's a good question. I don't think we have uh, implemented that yet, but yeah. Um, yes? So does the, um, when you're writing for the plugin, uh, yes. the plugin effects, does it work the same way as like, like current user plugins? Like, yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it works, yeah, it uses the same plugin backend. So um, uh, obviously you're just exposing a different uh, like query function um, and you can obviously, your plugin can actually have not just uh, DSP effects, it can have like uh, graphics um, uh, callbacks and stuff like that as well. And it'll just query and get like what it needs from the, uh, the plugin. Is yeah. the graphics callback, is there anything currently new that works like this or just something new? Um, the graphics one or? Yeah, or I'm not sure, you'd have to ask the, the graphics guys, but yeah, um, yeah. Is that going to get exposed like on the DOS side, like live? Is it plugins or? Well, actually, well, this, like I say, it's a demo, so it's uh, <laughs> like we're not like uh, pushing something as like a, a new feature. So, yeah, at, at the moment, like the way it works, the way we've set it up as a demo is actually the, the, the plugin actually creates a, a shared space, like shared memory space, um, like application sharing memory space. And then so on one side, obviously Unity is just writing into this shared space. Um, and on the other side, uh, we've written like a couple of example plug, actually, uh, yeah, we've, I'm working on a pure data um, sort of example where basically we just like pull all the samples out, do some processing and then push them all back in again. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's super basic and, uh, and it's just showing you like what, where you can take it, where you can go with it, but yeah. Uh, right at the back. Uh, can you prioritize what happens if two or more snapshots are affecting the same thing? Uh, prioritize if two or more snapshots are affecting the same thing. As in like you want to have like uh, sort of the ability to like layer multiple snapshots? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like so if I have a snapshot that affects ambience, yes. when I go into a room and then I have a snapshot for low health and I want that to affect ambience as well, can I say which one takes priority? Okay, yeah, well, uh, so at the moment we don't, we don't support sort of like, uh, like I guess layering or like sets of snapshots. The way you would do that now is uh, and the, the, part of the reason why we s allow you to uh, split the mix up into multiple mixes. So what you would do then is like, you would actually have your ambiences set up, and you would um, you would you know have your snapshots in that mixer, and then from there you would have another snapshot that you're playing in. Uh, sorry, another mixer that you're playing into, and you would have uh, um, snapshots in that, which obviously can affect what's coming into um, the that mixer from the ambience mixer and stuff like that. So. Uh, that should hopefully, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but we're hoping that this is, should be enough. Um, yeah, right there. Um, it's kind of a related question. But, um, besides snapshots, what kind of API support is there to uh, modify and mix um, the different groups that, during runtime? Right, right. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, the main thing we have is this ability to um, expose any of the parameters. So if you're if your engine, you don't want to use snapshots at all because it's just you want to do something very technical or very different. You can expose these. Uh, you can expose these parameters, and uh, that will uh, allow you to ex access it from script. So in the script land, you'll be able to just either automate it, or you'll be able to say things like, um, and at the moment it's a bit hidden, but you can give it a, a name like uh, blah. And uh, you'll be able to say basically like a set float, it's called, and you give it a name and then you'll be able to set it to whatever you want. So, yeah. Uh, yeah? Um, we'll go back to uh, our audio guys and tell them, so how does uh, the 5L five, five stuff compare to like WYs? Right. What, what do I tell them? Okay, uh, so, so this is a good question. And my answer is that, and, and I get a, a lot of questions like, well, like, why don't you, why don't you uh, just like, like integrate Wise or integrate Def Studio, right? And it's it's a it's a really valid uh, question, right? 
And uh, I guess the answer to that and something that we're really kind of like focusing on is that we don't, we, we're doing this uh, internally because we feel that the experience is going to be a lot better if, we, if you're using the tool internally. Like when I say that, like if you're, if you're doing this mixing uh, in Unity, you can do it while you're playing the game. Like you can just play the game, you can add, add groups, you can remove groups, you can hook them up just while you, like during the play session, right? And so you're actually, the iteration time of your, of your sort of creative process is like, and uh, this is something that it's difficult to achieve when you have an external tool and you have to, you know, you're, you're building, then you have, you have to build, uh, build that uh, asset, then come back to Unity, import it, see if that made any sense, then okay, that didn't make sense, going back to, um, uh, going back to the tool. So, like, at the moment, we have obviously pushed uh, something that we feel is like, hopefully handling a lot of the, the mixing needs that you guys need. Um, uh, that obviously these guys also expose. And uh, going forward, when we, when we sort of implement the, the interactive sound side, we hope that we'll actu actually have a solution that is, um, will, will, people will consider is a better experience uh, in Unity because um, it's, it's achieving the same things as you're, you would get from WISE and, and FMOD Studio, but it's, uh, it's a really tight integration. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're heading. Yep. Um, are you guys working on any sort of user interface to allow for designers to map clips or a collection of clips or parameters on clips to things like events, such as I mean, playing random pitches on footsteps or yes. playing random uh, audio for Yes. 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 Uh, so the question is, uh, yeah, um, are we are we exposing any sort of ability to add sort of random? Uh, no, easily hook up random randomization and stuff like that, right? And yeah, again, uh, this is where we're heading with this uh, this uh, director thing. Thing we actually already have. I don't I don't have a build yet because um, it's broken on Mac. But um, uh, basically, we've already have the ability to do that, where we have the ability to drop in a bunch of sounds, uh, make the, make a collection out of them, and then uh, do some random spawning, do some random uh, att attenuation over those, uh, change random pitches, like basically uh, expose elements of those sounds as properties and then just uh, randomize them and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Can you add us an API for creating and manipulating audio mixer assets? Um, no, uh, so at the moment uh, you, the audio mixer is, uh, is created in, in the editor. Um, because it's such, the thing is, because it's such a really complex um, minefield of like uh, putting one of these mixes together, like if we actually expose an API that allow you to do everything, it would basically double the, uh, the API count in Unity. So um, we're, we're hoping to get feedback and we're obviously really thinking about, okay, but what, uh, what, can, we, what can we expose or what can we allow? Um, for, for, dy for dy dynamic changes um, without making it crazy, you know what I mean? So, yep, and it, yep. Uh, well, just to tag on to that yes. question, um, you mentioned that there's no runtime API for adding this. Is there an editor API for the custom tools? Yeah, at the moment, uh, there is, uh, the, the editor API is hidden, but we're actually, uh, we might play around with uh, exposing it in a later time. Um, the, there's nothing particularly like uh, ugly about the API, so if we clean it up, we should be able to um, sort something out there. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Well, we, yeah, we might be able, going forward, we might be able to um, facilitate that, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, the question was, can I have a submixer um, in a prefab and instantiate it? Um, so, at the moment, because uh, like, like I said, like I was talking about earlier, like this is for controlling the global mix. So, because it's an asset and it's uh, obviously loaded when the scene loads and when it's referenced, it's for controlling like the global uh, the global mix. Um, for things like what you're describing now, this is something that we're tackling in the future. With uh, so so in the with the director project that I was showing you, 
uh, where is it? Um, it's, it's a data flow graph, so you will be able to create uh, complex mix hierarchies as well in, uh, in, the, in this director thing, right? No, sorry, uh, the mixer is, but this is why we're tar but the mixer is targeted like a, a kind of like a global, um, global space, right? This thing is like the, the, the director stuff is something that you would be instantiating in your prefab. Um, like you would attach, um, you would instance, and you would play some sounds and stuff like that. It's, uh, it, I understand what you're saying, but uh, there's like a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of reasons why it's, it's chosen like this, obviously for performance reasons as well, so yeah. Yes? Yes.